All right, friends. <laughs> so the first thing, now we're actually talking on, on camera. <clears throat> we're being recorded. I want to start with Saturday, and then we'll work our way up to the broader picture. Because to be honest, I didn't really think I'd be sitting in a Jaguars locker room mm. talking about, oh, we're going to Kansas City, <laughs> and you guys are continuing in the playoffs. But talk to me about, let's say, the first like 29-ish minutes of Saturday's game. Uh, what were you thinking as that first half went on, Christian? I mean, you know, in the moment, it was kind of like, can anything else, you know, go any worse? You know, we just offensively kind of came out and dug ourselves a hole, you know, four turnovers, and just felt like one of those, those games where nothing was going our way. And, uh, you know, finally, when we were able to get that score before half and kind of shift the momentum a little bit, stop the bleeding, it was almost like for us, we went into halftime and, you know, that's when you start that positive reinforcement, start saying, hey, you know, we've been in this moment before, you know, had a couple games like this and let's just play our brand of ball, you know, and, and especially offensively, we knew we had a score every time we got the ball and defense, you know, get us some stops and, you know, we were able to kind of turn it around for us. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we prepare all week and, you know, we have rules and, you know, keys to victory and probably every single week of uh, our season, uh, protect the football. Uh, is one of our keys to victory, and you know that wasn't that wasn't happening. And you know you look go and look at the stats: two turnover margin, three turnover margin. Like those, the winning and loss record is, is pretty tilted um, in a bad way. So it was just playoffs. Like dang, like we got here, and you know we're kind of put, we're digging ourselves in a little bit, a little bit of a hole. Um, it was it was literally a gut punch, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, the hole just kind of kept getting deeper and deeper, but I mean, we've, we've climbed out of them before, so you know, we just kept playing. Yeah, it was really unfortunate. Um, kind of makes you just think like, what's going on? Um, uh, situations like that can creep in to make you think, start questioning everything that you've done at that point. Mm -hmm. or, or are you good enough to be there? Or, you know, things like that, or what are we doing? Or, but I was, we were lucky enough to have good leadership and guys like these two and just really hold it down and pull stuff together and say, okay, we got to hold the climb up, but it's not impossible. And we can do this. The Let's rely on our preparation, the way that we've trained since August, and let's go get this thing done one play at a time. I love that you brought that touchdown right before half because Evan, obviously, it's something maybe that made a difference for you guys uh, emotionally and also with a little bit of that momentum. But walk me through the play. What happened on it? Yeah, um, it was it was a... It was kind of a game plan play um, that we were working on all week, and um, we got the look we wanted. We get in the red zone, you know, we, these two guys, they, they draw a lot of attention. So um, Kirk did a really good job of, you know, pulling the safety out, uh, a cover for safety, and that put me working on the linebacker that had his eyes in the backfield. So, um, you know, it's kind of a double move, and Trevor, you know, we, we worked it all week, and we made a play, and um, it, it was a good it was a good first step. You know, it was, it was a big hole that we <laughs> dug ourselves into, um, and, but we, we've been in those situations before. That was probably definitely the worst, I'd say, just even with the stage, playoff game, um, down 27. But, um, you know, that that definitely sparked us going into the half. And once we came together and um, got to meet as a team and, you know, you know, support each other and, you know, kind of believe, come all together, um, it definitely uh, led us in the right, right path in the second half. Okay, show of hands. How many of you guys actually thought that down 27 you'd be able to battle back and win the game. Raise your hand if you believed it. <laughs> Liars. <laughs> I, no listen, listen, I'm, I'm like, I feel like we have a very <laughs> present, I feel, like we re, I feel like we have a really present group, like in the moment, in the moment team. Mm -hmm. And it was rough, like mm -hmm. the, the punt, the muff punt was like the punch to the gut, mm. but we, it, was, it was still time, like it was still time. And I, I know I was pushing myself, I know the guys <laughs> were, kind of going through it a little mm -hmm. bit, but um, I, I, I never, I never doubted it, okay. honestly. I'm going to let y'all finish, but Zay Zay, <laughs> since you told me the truth, <laughs> what were you feeling I mean, down 27-0? I, I, first and foremost, I believe in my teammates. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have the faith and confidence in my teammates, mm -hmm. but you, you can't st score 27 points in one play. And so I remember looking at Christian and being like, this is going to say a lot about who we are as men and how we finish this game. What type of character do we have? What type of football players do we want to leave? So it wasn't like a lack of like, we can't come back, but that wasn't my like center focus. My focus is more like, we got to make one play. And then that came in the form of Evan and then Marvin and then myself and then Christian and then stacking that. I've seen us do that. So I think that's more where 
my focus was that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I yeah. hear you. I just appreciate you telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, you're um, welcome. Right? I'm like... <laughs> He's like, guys, guys, <laughs> <laughs> I was with you on the sidelines. <laughs> what was the moment that it clicked in your head and it went from, okay, I don't think we can do this to, oh, we can win, we're about to win this game, we can win this game. So truthfully, I think when Evan scored, I was like, finally, we did something right. Like, we're on the board. When Marv scored it, I was more so like, okay, we're trending in the right direction. And then when I had got on the board, I was like, okay, we're, we're, we can do this. And then when Christian scored, I was like, it's a wrap. I think another part too, I mean, obviously because we're the ones scoring the touchdown, but to be honest, the way our defense came out and played in the second half, uh, and that was one of the keys is defense has to go out there and get a stop. And once they get a stop, offense, we got to go down there and score. We talk about manifesting and, and speaking it into existence. So when you come out and you do exactly that, and then the defense is getting another stop and another stop and another stop, and we're getting the ball, it's like, okay, you know, it's going the way we want to go. You know, it'd be different if, you know, they were, you know, kept scoring and, you know, kind of became a shootout and we had some breaks here and there, but the defense was lights out in the second half. And so we wouldn't even have these opportunities, field position, and, you know, another guy, Jamal Agnew, and his returns and being able to put us and give us good field position, it was kind of like, all right, things are starting to go our way. Like, it's all starting to happen. So, yeah, the touchdowns are happening, and it's easy to believe after touchdowns, mm -hmm. but all the other, you know, minute things that happen throughout a, a football game that need to come together to do that, you know, started happening. And I think that was big for us, too. Mm -hmm. Another thing uh, for me the, about the defense is, if you if you can go and find all the you know sideline mic'd up footage or whatever there is mm -hmm. um, of the conversations we were having, the defense was nonstop positive, just yeah. having our backs, letting us know like they're they're gonna go get the stop, they're gonna get us the ball back. For you. Like everybody's like energy was believing that we were gonna come back and win, and obviously we were down 27-0, and that that drive before half like we had to make something happen, like for us to even have a shot, like. That had to happen, and we put it together. And we were down the Dallas game. We were down 17 with you know 20 minutes left in the game, and down 20 at halftime. Like that wasn't we the, the, we didn't feel like that was impossible. So, um, but yeah, just the energy on the sidelines, just from all the guys, like all the words and all the beliefs, like it was coming out of, like in in audible form, mm -hmm. yeah. and then it transpired. It was it was awesome. Okay, so four interceptions for Trevor in the first half. That's got to be tough for any quarterback to come back from, and, and we haven't seen it in a playoff before. So what is he saying to you guys? What is he giving off? What are you saying to him um, in a half like that? Honestly, I, I don't remember exactly the things he was saying. I know he was, you know, taking accountability and, um, and you know, he had good energy. Like, it wasn't, he didn't shut down. Like, he didn't, like, ball up in the, into a corner. Yeah, like, he didn't do that. He was up and down the sideline. He was, like, still trying to get guys going. It was just great energy. It was just staying positive in the midst of one of the worst halves, mm -hmm. and, you know, any quarterback can have. So, um, that's, to me, that said a lot. I, f I feel like you can, you can really see the focus in his eyes, and he's very present. Uh, very mature for his age, and he's able to to kind of let things go. So I didn't see a whole lot of panic. There was frustration, of course. We were all frustrated, but the way that he was resilient, talking to everyone still, being positive, encouraging, and, and talking about the next plays, I thought was very impressive for a guy like him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he does a really good job with his body language. You know, whether it's you know even after a mistake. Uh, obviously, we were all frustrated. You know, and there's certain plays that happen where emotion can get to you, but. You know, kind of like what they were saying is he does a great job with his body language, you know, not letting the emotion and frustrations get to him, not letting his teammates or anybody see that, you know, come back to the sideline, taking accountability for what had happened, um, getting the guys, rallying guys, encouraging guys, you know, if, if another guy had made a mistake or, you know, maybe missed, you know, whatever their assignment was on that play, encouraging them, saying, hey, you know, we got this, we're good, you know, we're going to get the ball, we're going to get another opportunity. And then, you know, as we take the field and start a new series, you can just see, you know, he's locked in, he's still focused, he's yeah. still dialed in, mm -hmm. and, you know, nothing that happened previously mattered. Mm -hmm. You know, when uh, Doug Peterson's walking off, and you guys don't get to hear his halftime interviews, but he was very calm, and he was like, here's what we did wrong, here's what we have to work on, and we just have to keep chipping. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's cool, like, in theory, sure. yeah, let's make that happen. But what was it like in the locker room? What's the message? Is that the exact same message that you guys got? Was it calm? Did it sound different? I mean, how did it change the entire way that you enter or came on the field in the second half? I, I remember coming into the to halftime and sitting down next to Trevor and Tom, like, honestly, it doesn't get any worse than that. You know, we can't go out there and do any worse than what we just did. So 
Let's just go out there and play football. We got nothing to lose. You just put in on the worst half of football that anybody could probably put on in a, in a half of football in a playoff game. So let's just go out there and play our ball, have fun. You know, let's not forget, you know, the, the game that we play. Yeah, it's a big moment, it's a playoff game, but, you know, we dug ourselves in a hole. All we can do is just go out there and play. We got nothing to lose. And, you know, just trying to almost lighten up the mood. And although the mood was pretty light, you know, mm -hmm. guys, you know, there's no panic. You know, there, you don't see anybody going at one another or pointing fingers or, yeah. you know, focusing on what's going wrong. It's all about, you know, okay, let's flush it and let's move on to, you know, what we can do, you know, better. Mm -hmm. I thought a lot of people were just very composed. I think it starts with Doug. You know, I, I think at this stage of the season, we all trust him and, and the things that he preaches. And he's been here here before and he's done it. He's mm -hmm. won. So I think we just rallied around that. Um, the central focus was starting fast and, and putting points on the board and getting a stop and doing what we needed to do. So it was more so just like, what meticulously do we need to do rather than like worrying about everything that's going on. The past is the past and we have an opportunity to play or we're not gonna be able to play anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the, for me, obviously we come in there, we have our process, uh, coaches come down, give us a plan, defense does the same thing, and we kind of come together. And that was like our first real moment coming together as a team. Like on the sideline, it's kind of hard to gather every single body up um, in the midst of the half, but in halftime, you know, we have that moment. And um, one of the guys stood in there and said, you know, manifest us winning this game. Like see it, believe it. Mm. And that really hit me. And um, I think that, those words kind of prevailed me into, you know, every st single step I take, like just empty the tank. Mm -hmm. And I felt that from everybody else. I felt like we all had this connected energy of believing that we were gonna come back and win this game. This guy's a great leader as well too. Mm -hmm. And I mean that, like, That's I think so I think Evan, mm -hmm. Evan really is a natural leader in the way that he speaks to the team, the way that he just evokes his emotion. I don't think it's you know, disingenuous. I think when he speaks, he really means it. Um, and a lot of people follow what mm -hmm. he does and the type of things that he does. He leads by example. And so when someone like that speaks before the game, that's what I mean by like mm -hmm. not seeing 27 point comeback, but it's like, I got people beside me that are never gonna play with me. And that, that's, I think that's what truly matters. What does it mean to hear him say that? It means a lot. Mm -hmm. I love this dude. I try to tell him I love him all the time. Mm -hmm. okay. um, me and C. Kirk, um, we feed off each other too. Uh, he's, <clears throat> he's a great weapon and I, you know, watching this game. That I've known him for over a couple of years. We trained together. Um, we actually, me and Zay actually did combine training, you know, coming into the league. So um, we all have this connection and we all have this belief in each other. And, you know, these guys mean a lot to me. And, you know, we all work so hard. I feel like we have all have a chip on our shoulder. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're on a team that has a chip on the shoulder as well. And uh, we're, we've been put in situations to go out, you know, prove ourselves. I'm mm -hmm. um, to step up. And I love seeing these guys make plays. And I love, you know, the energy they bring to the team. And, you know, they, I enjoy coming to work every single day. I, I can't say that about my whole career, mm -hmm. um, but my first year with these guys, I, I really enjoy it. Sometimes I don't want to leave. I want to keep working. <laughs> it's been fun. Yeah, it's and been you're getting fun. old too, so that's saying a lot. <laughs> You've been around the league, child. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to come back to how you guys came together because I consider you guys like the Avengers. You know what I mean? Like you came out of nowhere, come to the Jaguars, like and back that. in the playoffs. Well, who, what is, who is Christian? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm going to work through that with y'all, so All think right. about it, okay? All back right. of the minds. Um, but I want to go back to a turning point I felt like in the game, and it was your long touchdown catch, uh, and it made it 30 to 20. So yeah. describe the play, what you saw on it. Okay, so fun fact, that was actually Christian's play. We had practiced that all week with Christian. <laughs> okay. We had got caught in a what tempo, yeah. hurry up style of yeah. of offense, and Trevor, or you know, however he got the check, he checked it, mm -hmm. and we were kind of stuck at the number three and number two spot. And I looked at Christian and he, he called the play. He was like, you know, he said the play and I looked at him and then in a split instant, within like two seconds, the ball had snapped. So I just remember the detail of how he ran the route to the week of practice. So I think that's, that's really special just to highlight him, you know, the way that he did it. I saw the way he did it. I studied the way he did it. And, you know, I just kind of took off and then dug and then mm -hmm. Trev threw a great ball, great protection from everybody to allow me to get that touchdown to kind of, change the momentum of the game moving forward. So just, I think it's a testament to the people that I have around me, you mm -hmm. know, Christian, Evan, offensive line, running backs, everybody that's involved. It makes this Jags team special. It's funny when you say that, because it looked like, so Trevor audible at the line, yeah. right? A scrimmage, so we're like, what's going on? Is it, you know, he's seeing something different, but part of it is just that you guys are switched. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
like Zay said, you know, we got we got the call, you know, heard Trev yeah. you know, say the play name, and you know, it's just we, we sit in our in our room um, every day, you know, as an offense, and you know, we go over practice, we go over you know game plan, install plays, and you know, it's it's on everybody to be accountable for everybody else's job and to know mm -hmm. what they have as well. So every single play, we know what we're trying to accomplish, and if you know that, when moments like that come up. You know, and we're in a different spot. You know what Zay's responsibility is, and Zay knows what my responsibility mm -hmm. is, and you know, so we're able to do that, and it just helps, you know, kind of the dynamic, you know, ability, you know, of our of our offense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then comes your touchdown. So mm -hmm. was there any miscommunication? What happened no, on your play? No, I need to know. <laughs> no, that was, no, that was just that was just a, a, a huddle play, mm -hmm. huddle play yeah, call, yeah, and yeah. it's just kind of like a. Uh, honestly, like a, just clear the court, you know, one on one isolation, and you know, just got to go, you know, went on a corner. But you know, honestly, just all the plays that led up to getting us down there and yeah. getting us in that um, that opportunity, you know, was just big. You know, in those type of moments, um, I think anybody can feel some sort of pressure or some sort of you know sense of urgency, and you know, the moment can get really big. You know, when you know that you have an opportunity to help put us back in this situation. And I think, you know, especially all three of us and everybody else on the offense did a great job of just kind of honing in on, on their job and, you know, not making the, the moment any bigger than what it is and just going down there and executing. Mm -hmm. Coach calls, we're going for two. Like, we're going to win the game. Yeah. You see Trevor punch it in. Your reaction? I was supposed to get the ball. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was supposed to get the ball. There's a lot of. I was, I was supposed to get the ball. Yeah, he was, bro. He yeah. was. So I'm like, geared. I'm ready. Like, I'm. And then uh, he snaps the ball. And he just flies over. It was it was a dope play. I mean, I wasn't mad at all. Like, mm -hmm. He actually came on the sideline. He was like, "Bro, my bad." I was like, "Bro, shut <laughs> up. Bad. Like, do your like you did your job." Like, well, it, it, it's funny too because we were in a, a wrong personnel, so I lined up in a position I hadn't got a rep at that all week. And so I asked Zay, "I'm like, Zay, am I blocking for Evan?" Bro, you're making play? it sound so like, <laughs> like we don't know. What we're doing. <laughs> but, but hey, that's it's, it's all about communication. But that's like that's how we operate. Like. Mm -hmm. it, if it's different or, you know, if there's something's not right, we you know, we, we always talk about communication find and a way we to just we find a way to do it. Well, if you have the right pieces to the puzzle, you can figure it out, right? It right. doesn't matter where they are. And that's yeah. what it sounds like you guys have continued to figure out no matter what, which is kind of cool. So are you watching the game-winning field goal or not? What are we doing? Do you wait for it. the crowd ro the I roar? I didn't watch it. No. Okay. I watched it. I saw, I saw them jump over the line, and I thought it was, it was going to be bad. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the kick go in. And I was just. You watch it? I watched it. Why? Yeah. I mean, bro, I was, I was like, I was in my feelings too, bro. I remember we was walking off the field, and I was like, bro, I love y'all boys, drink. bro. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 were, we was walking, we, we walked off the field. We were, I was all lovey dovey with all the guys. I was just so proud of how we just even got to that point. And uh, and I, um, I, yeah, I sat down, had the nice little view. Um, the guys doing their job made the kick and. We, we're on to the next. You better cry. Yeah, Zay. Shut up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Zay picked me up and carried me halfway around the stadium. I was lit. I wasn't. I wasn't looking. I was facing our bench, no, just I, head I didn't down. Look either. Mm -hmm. I wasn't gonna watch. Yeah. What, what, How did you know? How did you know? The crowd reaction. Good? Yeah. Just watch a couple Jags fans, see what they do, and they went nuts. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, he made it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that you had emotions, kind of walking off the field, because this is a team. I mean, you guys lost five games in a row in the middle of the season. You started the season two and six. The postseason could look completely differently. Y'all could be in Cabo somewhere. But somehow you found a way to make it to a divisional game and you're headed to Kansas City. Like, what does that say about this team? And did you believe you'd be in this situation when you're losing five straight? Honestly, like, when we, the, it was actually the, the first time we played Kansas City. And we went, we got down to three seven. We were three and seven, and uh, that was a that was a tough game. Um, that was a tough loss. And uh, Doug was actually in the locker room that that post game speech. He uh, did. And he called it. He said, you know, he did. We just gotta it. keep fighting, keep going. Like this season will come down to the last game, like for our division. And in that moment, I'm gonna be honest. Like I was hot. I was mad. Like I was just ready to just get on. And uh, and we broke the team down, you know, it was, it, we went we went along our way, but, you know, it was actually true, it just actually happened. Um, that was our bye week, we went into our bye week and, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of came together, fixed some things, and then kind of began the run, so. Well, Doug, Doug also was like, we got seven to get, we're going to go seven and no, we just got to win one at a time. 
I think that was like, yeah. and it, the overall theme was finish. Mm -hmm. I think that was pretty much what preached every single day. It was mm -hmm. finish, finish, finish. So it was just us taking, I think, just one step at a time and then and the cliche of stacking them. But I did believe in that for yeah. sure. I think the, the most frustrating part about the first half of the season was, you know, we had two wins early in the year, you know, against Indy and against, you know, the Chargers where we went out and we dominated. And so everybody knew that we were a good football team. And so when we were going out there and we were losing five straight, it's like you're searching for, like, where did that go? Yeah. And then you get to a point, you know, you lose a game like in Kansas City, you lose in London, just tough losses, and you're like, how are we gonna? How are we able to gonna get it? Get a win at this point because we feel like we're doing everything. And yeah, there's some mistakes, but we're, we're going out there. You know, there's never been a lack of you know toughness or guys being you know wanting to be out there and wanting to play for one another. So we're doing all that. We're practicing hard, but we're still it's not showing up on Sunday. So I think also coming out of the bye week and getting a win like we did against Baltimore, that kind of broke the seal and was like, all right, you know, Thanks. like we can do this, you know. And it just takes all four quarters coming together and playing as a team. So we got that win and, you know, we lost to Detroit and that was, you know, a loss that, you know, they came out, they just, they wanted it more than us. You know, it was one of those days where we just, we didn't show up and, you know, everybody knew that, okay, that's not us. And so let's get back to playing our brand. And, you know, you have wins like Cowboys win and, and whatnot that, you know, just kind of shows, you know, what type of team that, that, we're, that we were. Mm -hmm. And obviously the team, we're not in the situation if you three, the Avengers, don't come together and descend that. on Jacksonville. I know. <laughs> um, but for real, talk to me about the decision to come here because, from my understanding, Jackson, the Jags wanted people who wanted to be in Jacksonville, mm. uh, that wanted to play and be a part of this team and grow it, obviously. Like, you're not showing up thinking, like, oh, this is the most successful team in the NFL. You're showing up knowing you got to build something. Mm. What brought you here? Like, why did you think that this is a place that you could come? And like you said, you'd been around, you've been in the league. Make a difference here. Yeah. Um, for me, it was, I had a rough five years in New York and uh, um, great Team, like great organization. Uh, I was on some great team, like good teams with good teammates. And uh, so it was kind of hard. It was definitely, I was entering the transition. It was kind of time to, you know, fresh start somewhere. And uh, my free agency process was kind of a whirlwind. It was it happened really fast. And um, it came down to two teams and Jacksonville was one of them. And, uh, you know, just being, I was in New York. So I was playing against Doug for three or four years. And um, I was a very um, observant player and definitely of other tight ends in the league. And they had Zach Ertz, they had Brent Selleck, they had Dallas Godair, um, Trey Burton was making plays. Like he, I just noticed how he put all his tight ends um, in positions to be successful. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and their offense was a dynamic offense um, year in and year out. So when it came down, you know, Doug was, you know, they were interested. Um, and so I knew that they had a plan. And uh, if I come in, you know, be myself, buy in. Um, you know, I can I can come in and, and kind of get get a roll on with my career, and you know, be the player that I've always felt I can be. And and even as I was kind of on the phone, you know, agreeing to it, these I saw these guys pop up on the NFL Network mm. um, that they were they were coming too. So um, it's kind of a you know it's, it's been a blessing for me, um, just just the whole process and how everything kind of happened and to where we are now. It's pretty really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was in Las Vegas and a new regime had came in and. Uh, I wasn't included, I guess, in their future plans. And then so I was searching for a new home, had a few teams interested. And then I just saw the dynamic of what was being built here, kind of along the lines of what Evan was talking about. I had a couple guys who also played uh, for Doug in the past, including like Jordan Matthews, Nelson Aguilar, Nick Foles, guys that I had reached out to. And I really just had to weigh my options about what do I want for my future? Like, what do I want it to look like? The quality of life that I want, the type of team that I want. and the direction that this organization is headed. And I saw, I did see a lot of potential in Trevor as well. Uh, you know, although he was young, I knew there were things that ha had, had happened in the past, mm -hmm. but was really looking towards the future. And I saw Christian was there, or was here, um, Evan as well, and I was like, we're okay, we're building something. Now I just need to know how will I fit into this? And then as I got to get more answers and kind of find my way into it, I was like, okay, this is definitely something that I want to be a part of, and it doesn't hurt to be by the beach. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sand uh, never hurts. So, uh, yeah, so. the ocean doesn't hurt. Uh, yeah, I mean, very similar. Um, you know, I think for me, uh, 
I was a teammate of Zach Ertz as well. And, you know, I remember before I hit free agency, he told me, he said, if you get an opportunity to go play for Doug, you know, you should really, you know, take that into account. And he had nothing but, um, you know, high praise for him. And so, you know, obviously when Jacksonville started coming into the picture and, you know, they had expressed, um, you know, the amount of interest and, in, you know, coming and being a part of this, you know, having Doug here and, you know, being able to, you know, see his his goal of, you know, the culture he's trying to put in place and obviously his history of being a coach and success. And, you know, as in being in Arizona last year, you know, we came here and, and played Jacksonville and it was a close game. You know, it came down to the fourth quarter, finally able to pull away. But I remember walking away saying, you know, they, you know, that was a pretty good football team. They have some talent and, you know, obviously Trevor, I've, you know, followed Trevor for a long time. And, you know, he's one of the young up and coming quarterbacks that, you know, you, you see it all, it's, it's all mm -hmm. there. And so, those were two main factors, you know, for me. And then, you know, just an opportunity to come and, you know, be able to prove to not only myself, but to everybody else that, you know, I'm the player that I know I can be. And I know for these guys as well, and just this team, it's, you know, you mentioned it's having that chip on your shoulder. And I know for me, I had a big one, you know, especially after this off season of just, I mean, a lot of it was proving it to myself, but I don't do a lot of things for other people, but you know I know the type of player that I am, and mm -hmm. you know I know the type of you know players that these guys are, mm -hmm. and you know this team, the guys that we have. So being able to to be a part of something that allows you to have the opportunities to prove that is definitely enticing, and was part of you know the the reason why I came here, and you know it's been uh, nothing if not more mm -hmm. you know than than I've you know expected. Well, congrats on your thousand yard season. It Thank seems you. to have worked out. Appreciate that. Snaps. Uh, I'm going to go with Hawkeye, go. Black Panther, Captain America. Damn, I like Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Is he an Avenger? Yeah. You Captain America. <laughs> well, he's the leader. He's Hawkeye's like the leader guy. Okay, last yeah. question because nice. we're going to Kansas City. So. Be Iron Man. I, I kind of wanted to be Iron you got, Man. You, you, you got Black yeah. Panther? He got Black Panther. I mean, he's easy. -E. Wakanda forever. <laughs> <laughs> What's the accent for me? <laughs> Does that work? Do you want to change it? Do we need to fix the names? As long as I can be Iron Man. Okay, you're Iron Man then. Right, cool. Forget Hawkeye. Right. You kind of mentioned that the Kansas City game in the regular season was a little bit of a down point, but also a turning point. So what does it mean to be able to go see Kansas City here in the postseason? Um, you know, we see, our, we see this team um, as, you know, competitors not just this year for the whole thing, but for, for a while to come. And obviously Kansas City's been that team that's been doing it. So, um, you know, we're, we're kind of the up and coming newcomers. And, uh, you know, we see this as, a, as an opportunity to go take out the top dog. And uh, we've seen them once and we know, you know, what we're capable of. We know what we kind of, we, we can do better. We're, we're a totally different team. We're a totally better team. We're different and better players. Uh, we're better at our craft. We've learned so much from that point. Um, that's going to help us, you know, in that game in, in big pivotal moments. So, uh, I mean, it's a division around the playoffs. Like, I, we we grow up, you know, watching these games. We grow up dreaming of this moment, and it's here. And uh, we we went through a lot last week in a, in a three hour <laughs> period. So, uh, you know, we're we're still we're still alive, um, and uh, we get another opportunity to go be who we are. It's a good football team we're about to play, and we got to be ready. But, you know, like we said earlier, I wouldn't want to go to battle with anybody but them. Um, I'm excited for the opportunity uh, to go into the road, to play in a hostile environment. You know, this is what we live for, you know, getting closer to our goals. And, you know, it's just one step at a time and the, the next piece in the way of where we want to go. So we got to take care of business. Yeah, and kind of hitting off of what Evan said is, you know, the road you know, to the AFC Championship and the super, even the Super Bowl is, you know, I've been going through Kansas City mm -hmm. and that's how it's been for the past couple of years. And they're a great football team, high powered offense, you know, with a great defense. And so, uh, you know, it's easy to say, you know, maybe the last time you feel like you didn't play up to par with, you know, how you, you feel like you're able to, but that's what good football teams do. And so, you know, for us, we have to prepare to play our best and uh, nothing short of that. And that's how we've been pairing this week. And, you know, we're just looking forward to, you know, getting out there and, and you know, displaying our brand of football and, and, you know, going out there and having an impact on the game. Do me a favor, guys. Don't get down 27-0. Yeah, no, we can't do that. And Casey. We can't do that. <laughs> we're not planning on doing that. Okay. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.